<laughs> Subnautica, you know, that big fish YouTube jump scare game. Yeah, that one. I've been playing Subnautica for a very long time, and by a long time I mean when the UI looked like this. Despite my countless hours in this game, I don't think I've fully experienced it yet. So, I've made a challenge for myself to experience the full game. So here are my rules. I have to visit every wreck, every life pod, and every alien cache. I have to scan everything that lives, and hatch all of the eggs. Seems fair to me. I won't waste any more time. Let's get into it. Subnautica intro. Fall. Boom. Ow. Fire. Splash. Cool. Hop off the life pod, grab some bits and bobs, make an oxygen tank, a knife, and a scanner. Then fix the pod. Life pod secondary systems online. Running full environment diagnostic and outputting results to databank. Weapons were removed from standard survival blueprints following the massacre on Abraxas Prime. You can't shoot the fish because of woke. I grabbed a bladder fish because I was running out of water and ended up making the world's first non-vegan water. Scanned some trash, grabbed some more bits and bobs, made the sea glide, the vehicle bay, and the sea moth. Step one is done before the aurora exploded. You may think I'm going through this a bit quickly, but it only took like half an hour. If you're watching this for a regular Subnautica playthrough, you, you came to the wrong video. Ruvines. Dr. Nefario, I'm fucking drowning. Since I'm on such a roll getting into step two, I decided might as well get a base started. So I went over to the floating island to scan for base pieces and steal food. While I was there, I grabbed the purple tablet and the Degasi logs. Do you want some of this? Alright, come here. Fuck, I thought. On the way home, I stopped by Life Pods 19 and 17, belonging to Second Officer Keen and Ozzy from, from the, the cafeteria. cafeteria. After building the, uh, the building tool, I head to the place that I usually build my base. Right here. Let me explain why. It's in the plateaus, yes, and I can understand why that's undesirable. But, hear me out, the safe shallows in the kelp forests are right behind you, and you're a quick swim away from the jelly shroom caves, the blood kelp trench, and the sparse reef. A little further away is the dunes, which I don't know how useful that is in most circumstances. And the grand reef is literally around the corner. You won't run out of most resources here, which is rare in of itself, but what makes this place special is it's close to the surface. Anyway, I built a pretty small base, but it has storage, a moon pole, and an indoor garden. Kinda. It'll be expanded soon enough anyway. Once I got my Seamoth docked, I gave it a paint job and a name. I dubbed the Honda Civic. I figured while I was waiting on the Sunbeam to get here, I might as well go resource hunting. So I went and found the laser cutter, the most crucial tool for getting into places you shouldn't be in. After it was done crafting, I headed over to Rec 14, famous for having laser cutter fragments sealed behind a door you need to cut through with a laser cutter. Remember to always stare directly into the light. Then I headed over to the Blood Kelp Trench. This place sucks. Once upon a three years ago, I had a base that stretched across the trench with an observatory that delved down. Also, the base was built in a hardcore world. My last time playing that world, I went to descend the ladder into the observatory, but instead I fell through the floor and into the trench. Anyway, I came here to grab some blood oil and deep shrooms. These will be useful later. Since the Sunbeam still hasn't got here, I figured may as well upgrade the Honda Civic. So, I gave it a depth module, an engine efficiency module, a fucking taser, and a sonar. I headed to the Northwest Mushroom Forest for Life Pod 13, previously housing one Yoki Kazar. There was also a time capsule right next to it with a cat poster inside. I headed into the big mushroom tree to grab our first cuttlefish egg and scanned around for cyclops parts. Survivor, we see you. Man, I don't know how you held out down there. We broke an atmosphere and we're descending towards the landing site. What fucking time? Change course. Set thrusters to full. Still don't care. Well, reverse 9-11. Anyway, I think everyone's seen the enforcement platform. Open the door, get under the floor, everybody, uh, get stabbed. Aurora time, I guess. I went home to make the radiation suit and the intellectually unique gravity gun, then set out for the ship. I popped by Life Pod 4, whose crew is now Reaper food. Speaking of Reapers, where is he? 
areas. Oh look, intellectually distinct head crabs. Honestly, there's not much to note inside the Aurora. Fixed up the drive core shielding and grabbed the blueprints for the escape rocket. But it's gonna be a while before we leave. I'm scanning you, bro, hold still. Alright, have a good one. Containment breach repaired. Further the fuck time to get the freak out of here. Ah. Don't mind me. So, quick tip about Reapers, they move like trains. They move really fast in a straight line, but take forever to turn. So strafe around them until you can get close enough to tase them. On my way back home, I stopped by the Northeast Mushroom Forest and got two-thirds of the parts that I need for the Cyclops. Then stopped by LifePod 6, which held the head of human resources. Then I headed to the Floating Islands to scan Cyclops engine parts. Once I got home, I built the Prawn Suit and the Cyclops. I dubbed the Sigma Warlord and a Big Wiener. Now despite all that resource gathering from earlier, I need more bits and bobs. So instead of doing that, I went down to the Jelly Shroom Cave's Degasi base. Yeah, I don't know either, but at least that's out of the way. Getting back on track, I hit up Wreck 13, or Modification Station Fragments, and found like 20 of them. After I got the station built, I fully upgraded Honda Civic's depth module and headed down to the Grand Reef Degasi base, grabbed the logs, and a second cuttlefish egg. After that, I headed over to the Bulb Zone and went through Wreck 3, looking for Cyclops' sonar upgrade blueprints. I didn't find any. Gotta get some scrap. That's what the fuck I thought. Never mind, sorry. With all the extra resources I got, I finally got to expanding the base, making a big room, a second one of these tower things, and another moon pool. This is all mostly powered by these things, Reginalds. I have a bioreactor with an aquarium underneath. The Reginalds get freaky and will multiply quite fast. They're the second most energy efficient fish in the game, next to Oculus's... Oculi? But I don't use Oculus, plural, because they don't freak on the regular. Anyway, there's nothing more to do than to get Nickel is needed for the next depth modules for Sigma and Wiener, so I take Honda Civic and head down to the Coke Tree and hunted for Nickel and the Brine. Alright, time to find the Sea Emperor. I'm telling this to you face to bucket. I am an idiot. The descent into the lava zone is marked with misery due to poor planning, game bugs, and being plain old unlucky. Cool? Cool. I did a quick drive back to the Lost River to go through the disease research facility because I forgot to on the nickel run. But first I grabbed the third cuttlefish egg from the northeast mushroom forest. This alien structure appears to have collapsed to the sea floor. You don't say. Anyway, the whole ooh, you're infected thing happens. Then I head back home and load the Sigma Warlord into the Big Wiener, then head down to the Lost River. Oh, shut it, you overgrown sea slug. Okay, okay, sorry. This is fine. So, uh, I forgot to put on silent running, but I managed to straighten out the Big Wiener and trudge forward on into hell. Welcome to the lava zone, land of the lava castle and the thermal plant. I grabbed the tablet that was in there and headed back, only to find my engine was dead because I forgot to take the power cells out. I hate these things, man. No worries, I have enough kyanite and the one single extra power cell I brought with me to craft a thermal reactor, so we're still alright, for now. Anyway, I pulled out the depth module for the big wiener so I could upgrade it as quick as possible. I mined up some more kyanite, crafted a better depth module for the Sigma Warlord, and headed into the lava lakes, through the actual most narrow cavern in the game. Going into the lava lakes, we head to the primary containment facility, which holds the Sea Emperor. That was unnecessarily loud. The Sea Emperor needs help hatching her kids, and sends us on a fetch quest on for a bunch of plants. Now, the containment facility has portals to the other areas of the map. If it doesn't grow in the aquarium, you'll find it through a portal which takes a while to go through because of loading times. Remember that glitch I mentioned earlier about falling through the floor while trying to take a ladder? These loading times fucked up and ended up entrapping the Sigma Warlord in 60 Don't tons of concrete. Yep, Sigma Warlord fell through the fucking floor. So, without a means of mobility in dangerous environments, I went through a portal, swam back home, which thankfully wasn't far, crafted the hatching enzymes. Farewell, friend. I don't care. Finally, I grabbed some of that delicious Enzyme 42 and got cured. Well, time to leave. Why is that so well? Anyway, just gotta get these grubs off and I'll show you. 
okay. Yeah, that's, that's cool, man. Okay, not dealing with that. Would you shut up? I swam home, defeated by my own errors, in the errors of the game's code. Sigma Warlord, stuck in the floor, and Big Wiener being boiled alive and used as a chew toy. Well, after that train wreck, it's time to tally up what I've gotten so far. Cool. Guess I should start from the top. I decided to start with Life Pod 7 since it's the closest. Come to think of it, I've only been to the crack fields like Hello, twice. everybody. My name's. Ah. Didn't know those were here. Next, I went to Life Pod 12. Oh, good. More mesmers. Kill mesmers. Behead mesmers. Roundhouse kick a mesmer into the concrete. I went to Life Pod 2 last, which is in the northern blood kelp zone. Not much to note here. Anyway, life pod tier list. Starting off with meh tier, life pod 12. Fuck the bulb zone. Next we got life pod 2. Location is nice, but it's kinda boring. Next we have life pod 3. Also boring. Onto the cool tier, kicking it with life pod 7. Mark flyer is in there. Then we have life pod 6. That's not a distress flare. Stop waving it around like that. You'll catch the fuel line. Are they stupid? Next is Life Pod 13. It gives some lore on the Alteran Mongolian relationship. And lastly is Life Pod 19. The only thing saving this from Med Tier is the Commander Keen reference. Now on to the best Life Pods. Starting with Life Pod 4, its flotation devices actually work. Finally is Life Pod 17. Ozzy is the only character from all of the Life Pods who isn't affiliated with Altera. He's just Ozzy, he runs his cafe. Okay, wreck time. There's not a whole lot to say here. Find a wreck, explore the wreck, leave. Simple as that. I started off with Wreck 2 since it was just outside my house, then headed to Wreck 15, possibly the smallest strike in the game. Is my mouse broken? Floaters, the actual most dangerous creature in the game. Next was Wreck 10, where I was greeted by a warper. We're chill now since I'm cured. On the way to Wreck 20, I ran over some leashes. I can't remember why, but Wreck 7 had me a bit paranoid. Maybe it was because it wasn't far from Reaper territory? Or maybe it was just too quiet. Wreck 8 had more warper friends. Wreck 18 was a massive pain to find. Wreck 12 was small. Wreck 4 was surrounded by bone sharks, which are easily repelled by electricity. Wreck 17 was also a pain to find. I have literally nothing to say about Wreck 1. It's big, I guess? Wreck 16 was comically close to the aurora. Wreck 11 was pretty deep down. Wreck 24 was in the bulb zone. Fuck the bulb zone. Rex 5 and 19 were in Reaper territory, which is fun. You know what's worse than seeing and hearing a Reaper? Hearing and not seeing a Reaper. Finally, the Rex that anyone who knows anything about Subnautica has been waiting for. Detecting multiple in class. Life forms in the region. Oh, that's a Reaper. And another Reaper. Oh, me might have made a wrong turn. This sucks. You guys sure you want to go over there? Anyway, while I was over at the dunes, I snagged a fourth cuttlefish egg. That leads into the perfect segue. Time to gather eggs. I already had a handful of eggs stored, but I figured since I got the fourth, might as well go for the fifth. So I headed through the Grand Reef into the Lost River, and went through the laboratory cache, which held the egg. What do you mean, research equipment? That's just a table. On the way back, I was lucky enough to find a crab squid egg on a stalactite. Once I got home, I dumped all the cuttlefish eggs into an aquarium, and set out looking for rabbit ray eggs which didn't take long. Next, I went out looking for crab snake eggs, which took longer because you have to play a game of is anybody home? And look for eggs inside the mushrooms. On top of that, the simulation was breaking. Oh my god, there's more of them. After that, I went to the blood kelp trench looking for ampule eggs. I looked up and down the trench looking for any, but didn't find any. Didn't really see any ampules either, which might explain the lack of eggs. The only other place that has ampule eggs is the bulb zone. Oh, you can't do this to me. I figured I might as well be smart about this and avoid all that. So I took apart my scanner room and moved it all the way over to the bulb zone outskirts. Turns out there was an ampule egg right below me and a mesmer egg not too far away. Once I got home, I dumped all the eggs into a separate aquarium from the cuttlefish. Now onto the sanctuary caches. The first one is in the sparse reef, which isn't too far from home. Cool. The second one is in the northern blood kelp zone. Less cool, but manageable. Saw the adult ghost leviathan that lives there. Who ignored me? And the last cache is... In the dunes. Willem Dafoe give. There was only this one reaper to worry about. The entrance was very long. While I was out doing all that, the eggs hatched. That's... Unnerving. This is right below my bed, by the way. Oh, better scam what I don't have. Can you hold still? Get out of the way. Okay, hold still. Can you? God damn it. This went from mildly unnerving annoying. Anyway, scanning time. From what I was missing in the databank, most of it was the smaller prey fish. So I crafted the stasis rifle. 
prepare to be scanned. Smoking ops in the Honda Civic. I'm 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 smoking, I'm smoking. Hop, hop, to the Honda Civic. Smoking in the Honda Civic. In the Honda Civic. I'm smoking up, up, up. Sadly, the Honda Civic can't come down to the lava lakes. But I need to scan the Sea Dragon Leviathan. I went back through the Mushroom Forest portal and arrived back at the research facility. Sigma Warlord is still stuck in the ground and Big Wiener surprisingly intact. Now I just have to wait for the Sea Dragon to swim back over here. Hmm. I have an idea. Dinner time, you fat shit. That actually worked. Freeze, scan, done. Time to leave. Launching 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time capsule jettison.